we have been moving this important issue forward and uh, now today is about working across Canada. So Seamless Canada is an initiative that is very close to my heart as I mentioned. Because I know that sacrifice in our military is not only about being in the field. Every day our military families sacrifice alongside. They sacrifice the stability that most Canadians families enjoy. They often uproot their lives every, uh, every two years, leaving behind their friends, their neighbours, their schools, their trusted doctors. They sacrifice the connection to the community that they have grown to be part of. They do this willingly to serve Canada as well. This initiative is about them, the people of the uh, Canadian Armed Forces and their families. For the federal government, delivering on our commitment to them is a sacred obligation. It's about making sure family, military families are well supported uh, from the moment their loved ones uh, join the forces to the time that they transition to becoming veterans. It is about easing the burden every time we post a member of our military to a different wing or a base around the country and often into different provinces or territories. So five years ago, in his report on the well-being of military families, the Canadian uh, Armed Forces Ombudsman noted that commanders view relocation as the single most unsettling aspect of life in the forces. We know today that military families still experience a lot of anxiety when it comes to relocation. We know that it is stressful uh, being without access to appropriate childcare, waiting for a new family doctor, or navigating a new school, school curriculum. We know it is tough not knowing how your kids are going to respond to new routines, on the loss of friendships, the loss of income when your partner's uh, professional credentials are not recognized, and the headaches of applying for a new driver's license or health care cards. These are all burdens that military families have to bear when their burdens are already heavy. It does not have to be this way. I know that each and every one of us cares about the women and men who serve and defend our, uh, our great country. And we care about those who support their efforts. I know that within each of us is a drive to do what we can to help them. Now we must do everything within our jurisdictional powers to make military family relocation within Canada as seamless as possible. Since we launched our new defense policy last June, I have worked closely with our defense team leadership to improve the quality of life for the Canadian Armed Forces members and their families. The comprehensive military family plan described in our defense policy, Strong, Secure, and Engaged, is an essential part of this effort. We have already provided an additional $6 million per year to modernize the Canadian Armed Forces military family uh, support programs. And Seamless Canada is consistent with the Department of National Defense and the Canadian Armed Forces people first approach. It is a great opportunity for us to lay the foundation for a permanent framework on how we can best cooperate together. We have a great track record of working well together during emergencies and in times of need. So whether it's from flood relief efforts in BC or New Brunswick or the forest fire evacuations in Manitoba, we want to continue to working with you to improve the way the other we offer services right across the country. And I'm eager to heal here, all of your great ideas on how we can stabilize family life for our Canadian Armed Forces members, on how we can improve service delivery and coordination across the country, and how we can ease the relocation burden. And I want to leave with you a story, a story that illustrates the, uh, which is too familiar, a uh, reality for many of our military families. I recently heard from a family whose five-year-old daughter faced anxiety uh, and learning challenges. When those problems emerged uh, after deployment of her, of, of her father to Afghanistan, she started seeing a therapist. Now she was making progress when her family was posted to another province. In the span of a couple of weeks, we were back to square one. She went back to the waiting list and had to go through the assessments that she had already gone through. That finally, that when she was a match with an appropriate specialist. A couple months later, her family was posted again and that they have to restart the same process. The daughter, now a bright young 11 year old, is thriving uh, back at home, and took, but it took longer than it should have. So we must do better for her, for her and for other military families. For this young girl and for all the children in military families, I hope that we can come together today to further this important conversation. Through Seamless Canada, I hope that we can support them 
uh, to be their uh, best, despite all the challenges that they have to face as a military family. So I'm very proud to advance this initiative together with all of you, our provincial and territorial partners, and moving this forward. So thank you very much for every one of you for being here and, and uh, supporting our military families. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Minister General, thank you very much. I had an opportunity to speak to the minister a few minutes ago. I had an opportunity to speak to some of the families of the men and women that have served our country and are serving our country and hearing some of the challenges that they're facing. As, as the minister mentioned, as simple as that we take for granted here in Ontario, as simple as getting your driver's license, getting a health card, making sure your kids are up to date on the curriculum, or even finding a job. A job that they find challenging when they find out they're from a military family, and all of a sudden, the employer is worried to hire them because they might move in a year, might move in a couple of months, as <coughs> the minister was pointing out. What we will be doing, we're gonna be supporting these families. I've been a huge supporter of our military. I love the men and women that have sacrificed in this country, and I want to thank them. But I can assure you, anyone that comes to Ontario, we will have a hotline set up that will have immediate, immediate action when it comes, when it comes to people moving their, their families. Because no one gives a bigger sacrifice than our military folks here right across the country. My friends and the colleagues and our partners from across Canada, I want to thank all of you for coming together and having this discussion about the role we can all play to support men and women in the uniform and support the military families. Because we all benefit from the services and their sacrifice. I've had an opportunity to meet hundreds of Canadian Armed Forces members over the years. They are proud of their service, and rightfully so. They face danger head on and put service to their country above themselves. Their sacrifice inspires all of us. In places like Afghanistan, they sacrifice to protect Canadians from terrorism and evil. And for every sacrifice our military personnel make, there's a military family back home making a different kind of sacrifice. Forced to say goodbye to their loved ones, sometimes for months on end, and sometimes forever. Every day we should remind ourselves that we are so fortunate to walk among heroes. Every day, is a day to say thank you. And today, a new generation of heroes now walk among us. The heroes who fought for our country in Afghanistan, and so many of them, are struggling with scars and their sacrifice. Scars that are not always visible. And we must always remember the 159 Canadians who made the ultimate sacrifice in Afghanistan. Our incoming government is already looking for new ways to support veterans and the military families, which is why today I'm so proud to announce we will construct a monument that honors the Canadian heroes of Afghanistan and memorialize those who never made it home. It's a small gesture, but an important one that sends a clear message to future generations about the heroes of Afghanistan and the sacrifices they made on behalf of all Canadians, lest we forget. Thank you, and God bless our military families. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, if uh, we allow both for the photo op, please step on two. If you allow, we don't need to.